Elsewhere, let's talk about what we've got coming up because uh, the Club World Cup is coming up tomorrow when Manchester City are in action. Let's hear from Pep Guardiola ahead of the match. It's so difficult to play to come here. <laughs> So difficult. So you have to do, you have to win the Libertadores, you have to win the Champions League, and both competitions are really, really, really tough. And and that's why it's just prepare, it's a unique and give all what we have to, because it's something that remains, remains forever. When you win this competition, it remains forever. And and uh, yeah, we have to, you know, because in Premier League, okay, had this season, next season, next season, next season, all will be there. But here. I don't know if we come back to play a final for World Cup, you know? OK, so a lot of expectations for Pep Guardiola. He always says it's difficult. Obviously, his team haven't been in that great of a moment, I suppose, compared to what we expect from this Manchester City team. But now they have the opportunity to add another piece of silverware to their cabinet, one that they don't have. It felt like it was all about the Champions League, and obviously that has led them to the Club World Cup, Real Madrid, Chelsea, the last edition winners before that, obviously Bayern Munich and Liverpool to round out the last couple of years. And for more on this, let's welcome in our very own Felipe Cardin asked to join us, Felipe, in his purple <laughs> glittery suit. I like it a lot. <laughs> hey, hey, it's it's if it's scoreline, you've got to come correct. And if Poppy's on the desk, you've got to impress. So that's what happened today. Hey, I love it a lot, Felipe. Uh, let's talk about Manchester City, shall we? Because how much re do you think this means for them? Because they're a team that's won absolutely everything. It felt like they finally got over that hurdle last season in winning the Champions League. But as we know, they want every single trophy that's available in football. So how much weight do you think this carries for Pep Guardiola? Well, you heard Pep, you know, I think he's saying the right things. You know, there, I think there are a lot of fans around football that that don't give the Club World Cup a lot of the credit that perhaps it deserves. Certainly not the credit that Pep Guardiola just gave it. You know, I think he's right. You know, you may not be back here, but you've seen the winners. Uh, the, the winner of the Champions League uh, typically takes the title. There, there's, there hasn't been a winner other than a European club in the Club World Cup. So I think this would be a big tournament for for a big win for Manchester City. You see Real Madrid go to this, to this club tournament, win the trophy and celebrate the win as if it were a big, big deal. And then they look at the patch that goes on their shirt in the next season, and it means a lot. So City, having never been in this position, uh, and it, it can be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You may not get back to the Club World Cup final. Of, of course, the, the, this tournament, the format is going to change in 2025. It'll be, I think, it'll be a better tournament. Uh, but I think this is a big one. This could round out a spectacular year for, for Manchester City, without a doubt. Felipe, injuries aside for this Man City club, let's talk a moment about the fact that, you know, they're playing away from Manchester, they're in Saudi Arabia, they're gearing up for a, a second half run in the Premier League. What are the perks for a team like this needing to get away, perhaps, better weather, better conditions to regain their focus once the second half of the Premier League season is upon us? Yeah, they, they've sort of escaped the pressures of the Prem, right? It's it's their Manchester City, the, the expectations that, that are on them in England and in Europe, honestly, are, are incredibly high. And when you go to a Club World Cup as a favorite, you know, I think there is pressure. But you're right, it's different. They're, they're thousands of miles away from, from England. They're thousands of miles away from the pressure of the Premier League. Uh, and and, and just, seriously, just the title race. You see how, 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 how tight it is in England right now. Every game really matters. And this can serve as a way to get away and be sort of a, a training camp, if you will, for the players to, to center themselves again. And actually, they're playing for a trophy. So it's it's not a friendly. It's not something that they've gone and planned. It's not a, a, a global tour in the Middle East. They're there to win a trophy and to make history. So I think that should be the motivation enough for Manchester City to take it very seriously. Obviously, a lot of motivation, Felipe. But when you look at the players that are available, obviously, they are dealing with injuries. But it's Halan Doku and Kevin De Bruyne not eligible to to play because they weren't in the squad for the semi-final. Are you surprised with these absences that Pep's going to have to deal with? You know, I think they have the players. Again, Erling Haaland, obviously, it's very, very difficult to replace, perhaps irreplaceable. Uh, but you've seen Jack Grealish be very good for Manchester City lately. Uh, and he's a player that I think can step up. You know, do they change the way they play now without Haaland? Is it, is it go back to the, to, the, to the old school days of Pep Guardiola and Manchester City without a very dominant number nine? Uh, that will be interesting. That could be an interesting tactical wrinkle. That's something I think Pep Guardiola, Guardiola probably embraced 
excuses. This the the challenge of having to play without uh, the the gold machine in early Holland. So that'll be interesting how he how he dresses. I think they're going to have a lot of the ball. They're going to dominate. They're going to be the favorite. They're going to control the tempo. So all those things uh, shouldn't be a problem. That'll be uh, on as the script goes with Manchester City. But how he replaces the number nine, who steps in, how they play, uh, it, uh, essentially in the attack, will be an interesting point to watch in that final. From the perspective of Fluminense, uh, Brazilian teams, you go back to 2012, Corinthians, the last time they won the uh, Club World Cup, that was against uh, Chelsea. What would it mean for this club, for the country, to bring back the Club World Cup? Well, for Fluminense, it would be an incredible feat. Remember, they won the Copa Libertadores for the first time in their history when they beat Boca and qualified for the Club World Cup. So it was a massive, massive moment for them. And honestly, I think for Brazil and for South American football, it's almost a trophy that they need to win right now. You know, that that has been the talk since even before the World Cup with 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 football really uh, in South America declining a little bit with Europe take, taking over. Obviously, Argentina winning the World Cup uh, halted that debate a little bit. But at the club level, you can see how elite the European competitions are. They're very good teams in South America, without a doubt. And Fluminense is one of them. I honestly believe that Fluminense is one of the most interesting teams in the world. You look at the team, the players that they have, Marcelo, uh, who, who went back to Brazil not to take a vacation. He has been a big part of, of this historic year for Fluminense. Uh, you remember their coach, Fernando Diniz, who is also in his spare time the Brazilian national team coach, which is still an incredible story. Uh, and he told reporters today that this match tomorrow is the biggest game of his life. And so that tells you everything about the importance uh, for Fluminense and this final. And they have other players. You know, Marcelo is the top guy there as far as the, the, the titles that he's won. But but right next to him, Felipe Melo in the in central midfield is the only Brazilian player in the history of the game to win three Copa Libertadores titles, and he'll be there tomorrow. So this is a team that can compete, and they're an interesting watch, without a doubt. Uh, Marcelo, I mean, just look there what he's won. He's just won absolutely everything. Uh, what about Deniso? Because you just mentioned him. He's become a bit of a football hipster's hero in the unorthodox way that they play, and everybody enjoys watching that type of football, obviously. But having said everything that you've said, Felipe, and what a big occasion is how do you rate their chances against Manchester City how do you think they'll match up against them yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it's going to be tough. You know, you do talk about the expansive play that Fluminense has employed throughout the year, and Fernando Dini today saying that he doesn't have any role models as far as coaches go. He just plays with the players that he has, and they have been very offensive. They're very attack-minded. They play very positionally, and they can take over games, but I, I, I just see it as, as a big, big uh, hill to climb when you're playing a team like Manchester City that is so accustomed to keeping the ball and just putting you to sleep in possession. And, and again, when, when South American teams match up against a European power, they do hope for perhaps that counterattacking goal. And that's what I'm going to expect from Fluminense. Perhaps they can do it. They have another goal scorer in Herman Cano, who has competed with Erling Haaland uh, as the top goal scorer in the world for the last two seasons. So he can score goals. It's just, does he get his chances? It, it's going to be tough for Fluminense, I think, though. Yeah. Well, either way, it's going to be a fantastic watch and a great matchup, isn't it? Felipe, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. All the best. Take care. See you later. OK, let's just remind you of the match that's coming up, Manchester City against Fluminense at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, and then the third place match as well, which will uh, follow 9.30 Eastern on Friday.